Hello everyone and welcome back. Now in the previous video we got introduced to the first kind of bifurcation that we kind of see in one-dimensional dynamical systems and that is a saddle node bifurcation. Now we saw this saddle node bifurcation is sort of this like big bang scenario where nothing or something is created out of nothing, right? You can also look at it backwards. You can think of it as two fixed points colliding and annihilating each other. Now, it turns out that there's other kinds of bifurcations that can take place. And in this video and the next one, we're going to explore them. In particular, in this video today, we're going to look at what are called transcritical bifurcations. So let's start with what's called the normal form. Remember in the last video, we learned about normal forms and we said that it's really just sort of like a Taylor expansion of a, uh, of a dynamical system around the bifurcation point, okay? So we're going to go back into this normal form uh, and deriving it in a moment. But for now, let's just look at the system that we're interested in. Rx times x squared. Okay, so this looks like the logistic equation, right? A very, very well-studied system that we see all throughout mathematics. And I've, I've done videos on this before, in particular in the math modeling set, uh, in the math modeling lecture series, and as well in the discrete time case for the ordinary differential equation series. Now, in this case, I'm going to let r be a parameter in the entire real numbers. Okay, so I'm not saying that it's some sort of growth rate or related necessarily to the logistic model. And I want you to take a look at that for a second and notice that it is very different than what we saw with the saddle node bifurcations previously. In particular, with the saddle node bifurcations, we didn't have the x here. In this case, x equal to 0 is always a fixed point. Always. Okay? So that's interesting, right? In this case, I'm not, I'm not annihilating anything. I'm not destroying things, similar to the saddle node bifurcation. There's always something there. There's always x equal to zero there. So let's look at a couple of the cases, okay? Let's start in the same way we did with saddle node bifurcations. Let's draw these, these uh, phase line diagrams using this sort of geometric theory on the x, x dot plane. Now, if r is negative, I get a function that looks like this. And in this case, I go through r over here and 0 over here. Okay? And essentially what happens is I have two fixed points. So this is for, sorry, for r less than 0. I have two fixed points. This one is... Uh, unstable, sorry, and this one is stable. Okay, so I've got my phase line diagram all drawn up for this. Okay, let's look at another case. When r is equal to zero, both of these fixed points coalesce. There's only one fixed point and, oh, sorry, this is x, not x dot. And in this case, it's semi-stable. Again, that semi-stability, that sort of weird, you know, not stable, not unstable, that tells us bifurcation is taking place. And let's look at the third scenario. Of course, we sort of break it down the same way we did with saddle node bifurcations. X, X dot. When X is positive, uh, that's supposed to go through zero. Sorry, everybody. Not my best drawing, but that's the beauty of dynamical systems. It just has to look good enough. And here, and in this case, and this is for our positive now. Okay, so you know, my bad drawings aside, let's take a look at what happens, okay? So two fixed points, one fixed point, two fixed points, okay? So bifurcation is happening at r equal to zero. On either side of the bifurcation, I have two fixed points, different than a saddle node bifurcation, right? Okay, what happens though? In this case, the second fixed point, the non-trivial one, is unstable, the one at r, and zero is stable. 
Then what happens is they come together and they collide at zero. And then the non-trivial one moves through it and takes the stability of zero. Okay? So what happens is fixed points collide and exchange stability. Okay, so I never lost one, I never gained one. What happens is they hit each other and they it's like a handoff, right? One says, okay, you can take my stability here. That is what is called a transcritical bifurcation. Now, I'm gonna show you what the bifurcation diagram looks like as well. Remember we said that we can capture everything interesting just doing a bifurcation diagram. And we saw for the saddle node bifurcation, that bifurcation diagram was just this sort of parabolic arc on its side. Let's do the bifurcation diagram in this case for the transcritical bifurcation. So at x equal to zero, there is always a fixed point. The only difference is when r is negative, it's stable. And when R is positive, it's unstable, okay? So remember, I do stable as a solid line, unstable as a dashed line, okay? So let's, let's uh, sort of pencil this in. This is unstable. You don't have to write stable and unstable on your diagrams. You know, the, the solid and the dashed lines will do the trick for you, and I will start doing that. But for now, as you're sort of getting used to it, I'll write stable and unstable, okay? Then, when R is negative, I have a second fixed point at, at R, and it is unstable. So, this is unstable. And at the bifurcation point, at the origin of this diagram, x and r are equal to zero, this unstable fixed point collides with the stable fixed point and takes its stability. So now it becomes stable, right? It's, it's quite literally a handoff. That's all that's happening, right? Two fixed points walk by each other, one takes something from the other one. In this case, the thing that's being taken is the stability. Okay, so if you're not familiar, if you, do, if you need to brush up on bifurcation diagrams, try and reproduce that yourself to get yourself familiar. Now, let's look at another example. Okay, so remember, these can happen in all kinds of systems, and the only thing that we know is that two, two fixed points collide and exchange stability. Okay, that's it. Let's do another example x times 1 minus x minus a times 1 minus e to the minus b times x. This case, I've got two parameters. a and b are real numbers, okay? Now, this system is going to undergo a transcritical bifurcation as well, but we would like to know where and how, right? So the first thing that we notice is x equal to zero is an equal uh, is a fixed point. Sorry, an equilibrium, a fixed point, all the same thing for any value of a and b. Okay, so just like this transcritical normal form, I've always got a fixed point, and again, this one's at the origin as well. Okay. I don't like that exponential there, okay? So what I would like to do, is I'm gonna do a little Taylor expansion around x equal to zero. I'm gonna try and make my life a little bit easier. Remember, our weapon of choice in this class is always going to be Taylor expansions. So, let's first expand out this into x minus x cubed, and let's do a nice little Taylor expansion. One minus, and then doing this Taylor, 1 minus bx plus uh, b squared, x squared over 2. And again, cubic terms, we've seen it happen many, many times. I'm going to neglect those cubic terms. So let's clean this up a little bit. And the first thing that I can see here is that the ones will cancel. 
and now I get a, um, a so triple negative here, it's kind of hard to keep track of. And I'm gonna get one minus a times b times x. That's an x here and an x here. And cubic terms, I don't care about. Remember, they, got, they didn't matter in the expansion, so I'm going to ignore this. And now I just have plus one half and then a b squared x squared plus order x cubed, okay? So this guy got sucked into the order x cubed thing. I don't care about anything with a cubic or higher order. Now, just like we saw with the last example in the previous videos, this looks qualitatively the same as the normal form, right? So if I just call this thing R, and if a b squared over two is just kind of one, or sorry, minus one, then I've got a transcritical bifurcation taking place. It's qualitatively the same thing. It's a linear plus a quadratic. Linear plus a quadratic. So in this case, we could look at this and we could say there's a transcritical bifurcation when a times b is equal to one. And the reason I'm saying that is because the transcritical bifurcation over here took place when r was equal to zero, when this term disappeared. I just got a quadratic term. So to make this term disappear, I need a times b equal to one. And you can actually solve this thing, you know, just again using the Taylor expansion. You could say near a times b equal to one, there is a second, so there exists a second fixed point, a second fixed point that is approximately, okay, I'm going to say approximately two times a times b minus one divided by a times b squared. You say, Jason, where did you get that from? What that came from is getting rid of the cubic terms and solving this equal to zero. Get rid of the x in here, one of the factors, because I know x equal to zero is always a solution, and solve it. So the reason I said approximately is because there's actually more terms on here. I have to be a little bit careful. But nonetheless, you know, if you just solve the, the front part of this up to quadratic, you can see that there's another fixed point in here. And look at when a times b is equal to one, this fixed point collides with the fixed point we already knew was there. So that's interesting, right? Near the bifurcation point, a times b equal to one, there are two fixed points and they collide at a times b equal to one. Two fixed points, they collide at r equal to a zero. So that's sort of how we can see that a Taylor, uh, transcritical bifurcation is taking place here. And again, Taylor says that you have to zoom way in. This is not telling us what happens for other parameter values or far away in space. It is a very localized thing that's happening here. Bifurcations are local phenomena, okay? It just says that at a times b equal to one near x equal to zero, you have a transcritical bifurcation. It doesn't say anything else about the system. You have to be very careful about this, okay? Taylor is a zooming in uh, thing. Let's look at another example, okay? Let's do r times ln of x plus x minus one, okay? So again, I've got a bifurcation parameter. I called it r again, okay? So I'm kind of throwing you off. I'm using different letters and I'm just trying to sort of keep you on your toes and make sure uh, that you understand what's going on here, okay? So that you can do this in a very versatile way. Let's analyze near x equal to one and find new variables variables, which I'll call capital X and capital R, which you maybe don't like, but that's okay. It's my decision uh, that brings brings the Taylor expansion into the normal form. Okay, so the normal form is right here. 
I said that this is qualitatively capturing everything that happens. I just showed you with the last example that you can uh, sort of do a Taylor expansion. It basically comes out to the normal form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you that you can always just rescale things and it becomes this. And so transcritical bifurcation is this normal form. Okay, let's take a look at this. So let's set, well, let's set u equal to x minus one. Why? The problem told me to center around x equal to one. So I'm gonna introduce a new variable that's localized around x equal to one. And when I take a derivative of this thing, this is just equal to x dot. So u dot is equal to x dot. Why? These derivatives take a derivative with respect to time. The one drops out, simple. Nothing fancy. Then x dot is r ln x plus x minus one, but I wanna write that in terms of u. So it's actually r times ln of u, uh, u plus one, and then plus u, right? There's a u right there. And I just need to rearrange this thing to isolate for x. Nothing fancy. Let's do some Taylor. Taylor, expand that ln term out. I get u plus one half u squared. And again, you know what's gonna happen. I don't care about the cubic term. So cubic term gets into an order notation and I get plus one. Okay, so again, just a Taylor expansion, nothing fancy. You might have to look up the Taylor expansion for ln, but again, I'm only going up to quadratic order, so it's not bad. And finally, I get r plus one times u uh, minus r over two times u squared plus the cubic order terms, okay? So this is a little funky, right? It doesn't quite look exactly the same. I have the parameter here and here. So maybe something is going a little bit wrong. Okay, so now we have this equation and the goal was to bring it to the normal form. We need to introduce new variables here, okay? So let's do this. Let's say put into normal form. Okay, so I need to get rid of the r over two term first. Okay, so first thing on the docket, get rid of r over two term. Okay, so how do I do this? Let's say let uh, v equal to a constant times u. I'm going to determine what that constant is momentarily, okay? But for now, I'd like to see just what the effect of this is, right? I'm just sort of rescaling my, my independent variable u. So it already went through a shift, now it's gonna go through a rescale. Let's see what happens here. V dot is equal to one over C times U dot. Okay? Ah, sorry, I put this backwards, right? U should be a constant times V, pardon me. U is equal to a constant times V. Okay, so now what I would like to do is I will write this as one over C and then times all of this so r plus one, and then times c times v, because I'm replacing u with c times v. And then I'm going to have minus r c squared over two times v squared, and then plus the quadratic terms. Again, quadratic terms not contributing here, so I'm not really concerned what they're doing. But now I can knock off some C's here. I get R plus one times V minus R C over two V squared order V cubed. So that means that, again, I get the freedom to choose what C should be. I am going to choose, so choose C equal to two over R, right? So if I choose C equal to two over R, this gives me that v dot is equal to r plus one times v minus v squared. And then 
order v cubed. That's looking good, okay? So now what I'd like to do is I would like to get rid of the r plus one. Remember the original normal form didn't have an r plus one in there. So now let's, sorry, part two, let's set capital R equal to little r plus one. Again, similar to what happened here, you're just focusing around the bifurcation point. In this case, transcritical bifurcation at r equal to minus one. And let's just take capital X equal to V. Now I get capital X dot is equal to R times X, R times X minus X squared plus the higher order terms. I just put them as a dot, dot, dot to really emphasize what's going on here. But look what I did. I through a Taylor expansion and a couple of redefinitions of the variable, turned it into the normal form. There it is. So what does that tell me? The same thing that happened with the saddle node bifurcation. It's that if you look at these bifurcations in the right reference frame, okay? So I had to shift my reference frame. I had to scale it, right? So I had to manipulate the axes a little bit. But when you do that, it turns into the normal form, you know, up to corrections, up to a Taylor correction, okay? Same thing happens for the saddle node bifurcation. And what that means is that the transcritical bifurcation that happens at x equal to one and r equal to one, uh, sorry, r equal to minus one in this system, the transcritical bifurcation that happens there looks exactly the same as the one from the normal form computation. It might be just a little shifted and a little scaled but it is qualitatively exactly the same thing. It's that little X that I showed you previously. And the reason I know that is because I turned it into the normal form. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at the last type of these bifurcations uh, that we'll analyze, and that is a pitchfork bifurcation. So that'll give us three in total, the saddle node, the transcritical, and next up, the pitchfork.